coming up on this episode with Kathleen McGivern. Hi there, in this video I'm going to be showing you the five must-have tools when hand building with clay or hand building ceramics. Let's get art inspired. I love to create and to me, the ultimate freedom of expression is a blank canvas or block of clay to capture whatever emotions your imagination gives it. Danielle Boulard. All right, so my first favorite tool is a paddle. So when you're hand building with clay, I love to use a paddle. Now, I made these. I just took some scrap wood that I had, I cut them into a shape, not great shapes, <laughs> but they're good enough, right? And then I just sanded the edges so I don't get slivers. And now I have a paddle. And the reason I like these is because you might be having a sculpture. It might be going one way and you might be like, oh, there's like a bump there. Where, where did that come from? Pat, 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 pat. <laughs> and now it's gone, right? So you can shape your sculpture with some a paddle. Well, let me try with my right hand because it's a little... I'm right-handed, right? So you just do some nice pats, you shape it the way you want, and it also condenses the clay particles, making it more firm and tough, right? Like kind of when you're wheel throwing, right? You're really creating a strong shape because you're condensing those clay particles, and you're doing that with this as well, right? No more loosey-goosey. When I'm hand building, I typically do a lot of coil po coils, so as I get to one part, I'll pat them down, right, before I add more clay on top, and that way I can ensure a nice strong sculpture. So I really love my paddles. I have a nice short little handle on there. They're super light. I typically hold them like this because it's just easier for me, and I love them. These are a favorite tool. Okay, the next is the wood tool. Wood tools are essentially an extension of your finger. You can use your thumb, you can use your finger, uh, which I typically do. Um, but these are like an extension, if you imagine, an extension of your finger. So I hold them like this with my thumb behind it, right? So it's an extension of my finger or thumb and I'm changing the end shape of my finger or thumb to make a different mark, right? I can make a smaller mark, right? So I can get those smaller details, right? Because my thumb is too big sometimes or my finger is too big for some smaller details. So I can use this to make a smaller mark or a bigger mark or a pointy mark, whatever kind of mark. They come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. There are lots of different brands, um, but if you're just starting, you need one, okay? You need one paddle. You can make your own. You need one wood tool. You don't need to go buy every single tool. My favorite is something more like this shape. I really like this one. Um, I also use this one quite a lot. It looks like my thumb on the other, on one end, right? But it's not a molar and this is more of a point. But this one I typically use, I could use this for the whole sculpture. It does a point. It has like a blady kind of one, right, mark. It does a long mark. On this side, it does skinny marks. So, and, and it can, yeah, has a nice curve, so you can get in those areas where I cannot reach you typically with my, my thumb or finger. So you need a wood tool. You need one, just one. Now, I wouldn't invest in getting one that's um, a little nicer from a pottery store and versus going to like, a hobby store because I find I'm not gonna name anybody I find the ones at a dollar store or a hobby store are made out of a lesser material or they're like really small like they're too small they're not in great shape they're very straight right whereas these are nice curves and they kind of mimic your hands and so I don't really like I've bought those cheap ones and I do not like them um, typically you'll find them like they're like a set basic you know pottery set for beginners, it has a sponge, here's your wire tool, here's your five, six different wood tools. I would rather take the money, go to a pottery store, a local one, look one up, and then buy a single one that's a little better because it's going to be a nicer tool. It's going to last you for literally ever unless you lose it. Why would you? Don't lose it. It will go forever. 
So you get a tool. Um, and like for instance, like this one's I think a cheaper one, maybe. But I can see it. it yeah, it is. It has to be. It's already. It's broken. There's the but the wood is broken. The, on both sides, it's chipping off. It's dark. Same with this one. Look at the long straight edge. What what is this? No. These ones. This one's a, a much. This one's a more expensive version. You can see it's a lot more bendy. Kind of mimics the shape of your hands. I quite like it. So that's important. So you need a paddle. One paddle and a wood tool. Okay, next, my favorite tool ever. A lot of people are taught to use, they always use their, I always see beginners using a needle tool for scoring. A needle tool for scoring. So this is a needle tool. It's a needle and it's a tool. It's a needle tool. Um, they use it for scoring. I don't use my needle tool often, to be honest. So scoring, we score the clay, so that way it has a rough texture on both sides, so that way it will stick and connect, right? Because otherwise you have two soft, straight surfaces, it's not gonna stick very well and it'll go bleep. When the water that's holding it together, suctioning it together, evaporates, when it dries, it will fall off. So we need something to link those clay particles together, so we have to scratch up the surface. Um, and a lot of people I see when they're beginners are using needle tools. To do this. One, this is going to take for literally ever. Right? If you're coil building, you're going to sit there and score with this needle the whole time. Okay, two, it makes a teeny tiny little mark. Teeny tiny needle marks. Like bird's toes on the sand. Okay, no. Get a fork. Just a fork. You can go to the thrift store. You could use your old forks. Whatever. Don't use a plastic fork. That's that's not going to be firm. Get a metal fork and use this. One, it makes a slightly bigger mark. Two, you just go along your coils and you're done. Don't use a needle tool. That's ridiculous. So find a. So far, we've spent very little money. Make your paddle. Grab a fork and get a wood tool. All right. Next is a rib. Now, I have an extraordinarily large collection of ribs. I even have old Visa cards or credit cards. You can use those as ribs. Right. Um, you can get them all different shapes and sizes, all different textures. There's metal ribs, there's wood ribs, there's rubber ribs. All right, this one's a wood rib. It's very firm, makes a nice firm straight mark. So if you're doing a lot of things that are need a nice firm, perfectly straight, surface, you're doing tiles, uh, whatever, um, more abstract or geometric shapes, get a wood rib. But if you're doing more figurative sculptures, then get a rubber rib. They come in different firmnesses. So you might say, wow, yours are lots of red. You got a green and you got a black. One, there's two different brands here. We have a Kemper Tools and we have Mud Tools. Mud tools color codes, and probably a lot of them color code their firmness. Um, so, like for instance, this green one is a medium firmness, right? Slightly bendy. This is a Kemper tool. It's a small one. It's a very firm one, not very bendy. And then this is a mud tool. It is a very bendy, soft one. I have lots of different shapes. Lots of these are good for wheel throwing. Um, I would not use this on my sculpture, because that would be weird. But I would say it is my favorite shape. I love this shape, my personal preference. I would say get a medium firmness, or a soft one, or one of each. Um, you could always get a teeny tiny one if you'd like to make teeny tiny marks, it's up to you. Um, but really, I would just get one rib. One rib. You can use all the parts of the rib, right? You can use the straight edge, you can use the round parts, you can use the corner parts to get in areas. But you'll need a rib to smooth out your surface. And finally, here's my tidbit, is I like to use a paintbrush with my sculptures. And you might be thinking, what? All right, so I, oh, I should not do that, that's dusty. 
I used to smooth out all of my sculptures with a sponge, which is also typically what is taught. Use a sponge, wipe it clean, right? You're scrubbing it all away, but what you're also doing is eroding a lot of different particles off. And you'll notice it gets really sandy, right? You have the grit in your in your clay that holds it together and gives it firmness, right? It's not porcelain, you're typically not. I'm not saying you don't. You typically don't sculpt with porcelain. It's a little finicky, um, but that has no grit, really. It's not, it's nice and smooth and perfect. Whereas when you're sculpting, you want a little bit more grit in there, some chunks um, to help give it some solid solidarity, no, firmness, strength. Let's go with strength. I use a paintbrush and I take my slip, I'll make slip out of my clay, the same clay. If there's a lot of grit, you might want to sieve that out. I've done, I've made some sculptures with it, I left the grit in there, a heavy grit, and that is a huge regret of mine. It kind of ruined them. There's a lot of sculptures. I, I, it was a regret, there's a regret there. Um, so don't do that, sift it out or sieve it out, and then you make your slurry or slip, and you paint on your slip, or you can just paint some of the areas with just a little bit of water, and it makes such a beautiful, smooth surface. So paintbrush versus um, eroding your clay sculpture with a sponge. So use a paintbrush. Uh, you will not regret it. It's a nice, much better way um, to finish up a sculpture than using your sponges. You can also get big paintbrushes, right? I have some larger ones for a larger area. I like to use very soft haired brushes like bamboo brushes. You can actually move a lot of clay around with like a nice firmer brush um, and it will push the clay as well in a gentle way, a lot more gentle than your hand. All right, so that's my five favorite tools for hand building with clay. Right, your next video to check out in the card above or in the link in the description below is five must-have tools when wheel throwing for beginners. So check out my recommendations in that video. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. When did you start hand building with clay? Let me know in the description below, or if you're going to start, let me know when you're going to start so we can create a nice, super cool community and share some tips and ideas with each other. So when did you start, or when are you going to start hand building with clay or ceramics? I would love to hear it. As well, please make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel and help this channel grow. That would be super, super helpful. And you, again, you're going to watch the next video, which is five must-have tools for wheel throwing for beginners. Again, description in the video, and I will see you in that episode. Let's get out, spy. <laughs>